Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And this is the series I'm putting together where we're going from Earth to Vesta. In the last video, we set up IMFD, completed our eject burn. After the eject burn was complete, we dumped all kinds of uh, dead mass. So, you know, each one of these is 4,000 kilograms. So there's like at least, you know, I'd probably like 20 of them there or something. So that's like 80,000 uh, kilograms that I think we got rid of, which will you know, increase the the DV that we have available to us. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here, jump back into the mission. All right, so uh, we have, uh, we're on our way to Vesta, so there's not a lot we can do at this point, except time warp. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. Let me look outside just for a moment, just to watch, make sure those are getting separated, and they are. And not that it's going to cause a problem in orbiter with them colliding with our vessel, but just in terms of realism, we don't want that to happen. So just a bit of time warp here, maybe go about 10,000 now. And is that the Earth already? Yep, it's already the Earth. Okay. Let's go back to real time for a moment. Put in a bit of kill rotation, and now we'll warp time forward. There's a couple of ways I can keep the vessel from spinning while I'm or uh, while I'm under time warp. Although you know I'm at a hundred thousand time warp, so it's it may look like it's spinning quite quickly, but it's really not. But I can bring up the scenario editor and do kill all angular velocity, or there's a there's this um, add-on I used to use in Orbiter called Kill Rot. I don't have it in Orbiter 2016, but uh, Rich, that's Rich, I think is his name, commented in one of my videos and said that that does work. So I may need to look into re-downloading that. And I do like the way Kill Rot works because it doesn't just eliminate all your angular velocity because that's kind of cheating. What it does is it uses the normal thrusters to do a normal kill rotation. And then when that process is done and you just have this tiny little bit of angular momentum left, then it kill it it zeroes all that out so it doesn't uh, so it's not like a fuel cheat all right so we are on our way to vesta our clo uh, closest approach is 278 holding pretty close at that number according to map mfd things aren't really changing so it, it is tending to go down but not really by all that much so we could probably just kind of stop wherever we wanted and do a bit of a mid-course correction. And we could probably just bump the translation thrusters. Looks like right about now or shortly after we're going to be crossing over the orbit of Mars. So it's a good thing Mars isn't right there. We'd be running into it, but it looks like Mars is way back there. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just stop now. Not really any particular reason and I'm just gonna bump the translation thrusters around a little bit Rotation. translation and see what we can do to improve the uh, the PEA I guess if we wanted to we could use the Delta velocity program to to do that um, you know to do kind of a what if but I think I'm just gonna try the translation thrusters first so I'm gonna start with uh, one and that's helping, but not hugely. So let's try two. That's helping, but even less. So obviously I wouldn't use three because that's going to translate in the other way. So let's try four. Wait, does four do anything? No. And then five is kill rotate. Six would be forward velocity. So let's try that. So that's helping a little bit. All right, so it looks like maybe one and six. One, two, and six. So let's... I'm going to hold down 1, 2, and 6 for now. It's not having a huge difference. Maybe I should have done a correction when I was still back at Earth. But I figured it would be... So we might want to actually go and do... We may want to actually go ahead and do like a maneuver here. Well, let me, let me try this for a little bit. So that's helping, that's helping. 
I don't think I have to worry about running out of RCS, and even if I do, I can cross-feed. Yeah, the day I'm recording this uh, is July 22nd, and today was the day that my first Earth to Mars mission after my six-year break got posted. Um, well, or today was the day of the last part that got posted, and that's the one where, you know, I was right above the uh, landing pad, and I actually rewatched that again really closely, and I wasn't as high up as I thought, because you have to remember when the XR2 is touching the ground, you're still at 2.5 meters, and I kind of looked, I watched that really slowly, and it looks like I was at around 4 or 5 meters when I ran out of gas, so I really only dropped about 2 meters, so... I think just the shock absorption from the XR2 would easily handle that, and I don't think people would even have been thrown around all that much, so it wasn't as bad as I thought. And there is a there is a point where if you drop too much, the the XR2 will actually cause a landing gear failure, and I don't I don't think we were we were anywhere even close to that, so. So it's really lucky, but yeah, if I had remembered that I could have just done a crossfeed, I could have avoided that entire mishap. So yeah, I probably should have went ahead and did a actual maneuver here, but you know we've already corrected by over 200 M, so I'm kind of committed to this now. And all these directions are helping. So now we're down to 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. So now it's coming down really quick. All right, so we're almost at Vesta. All right, so now... And I would say we could probably go all the way to the surface easily enough. Maybe even in inside just a bit, but I don't want to go overboard on it. All right, so we're going to say that's going to complete our mid-course correction, at least our, at least our first one. How far away are we? What is our? Okay, so our PET. All right, so let's go down to uh, 4M on the PET. So time warp. And you can see our PA is coming up, so it's good that we maybe went a bit below. So let's go down to 4M. We'll do another uh, correction of some kind. Now, stopping at Vest is going to be interesting because it's uh, it has very, very low gravity. You can orbit it, though. I think I said that at the outset of the series. I have found that you can orbit around Vesta, but you, you orbit at like 100 meters a second or something, 200-something really low. All right, so let's actually go ahead and come back out of time warp now, but sooner than I said, because we're you know, up over 1M now. So let's bump our translation thrusters again. All right, so... So yeah, these are really light taps. And we'll go with that. All right, so let's go down to 4M at least on our PET. And it looks like we'll get all the way to Vesta in this part. Probably won't land until the next video, but maybe we can get over to Vesta and get in orbit. All right, so we're going to skip over 4M, maybe go down to 2, because you can see our PEA is holding pretty well. And so we're coming up on 2M, so I'm going to come start slowing down on the time warp. All right, we'll go with that. And again, just a bit of manual correction here. And now I'm going to work more on trying to get to an orbital altitude around Vesta, which I'm going to say is like 50 kilometers or something. It's very odd, oddly shaped, so we don't want to go too low. So I'm going to go with that for now. Okay, how close actually are we? Let's uh, reference Vesta. 
So we have no gravitational influence from Vesta yet. So let's keep going. Keeping in mind that we're going to require a massive braking burn. Or massive velocity match burn. Okay, so our PET is down to 1M or less. I'm going to go ahead and bump the translation thrusters again just to get that PEA down to, I think, 50 kilometers is probably reasonable. Um, you can't orbit really low around Vesta because it's so oddly shaped. The difference between one spot and, like, you know, what it calls sea level and then the high points, it's quite drastic. All right, let's put Vesta up onto the HUD. And so that's Venus over there. So we were, what, what is our speed going to be when we get there? Our velocity, oh boy, is it really going to be that high? That's scary. Do we even have enough delta V for that? Let me think here. So I guess we do because we don't even have any extra fuel mass included. So I guess we'll be fine. Should be fine, looks like. All right. So how long is it going to take if we're going to get rid of 7,000? 500 meters. We need a long distance. We need a lot. All right, well, let's keep going forward. Okay. So keep going forward. Be a bit more cautious on time warp now. Zoom in a bit. So there's Vesta, that's us, that's our path. And yeah, this, this mission's insane. <laughs> Let's go forward a little faster. Again, be careful with that time warp though. out of time warp for a moment and so our PEA is 89 let's go ahead and do a small adjustment on that earth again I just feel like 50 seems reasonable might be able to go a bit lower than that even but we'll go with that all right and we needed how long So one, so two M. So what is that? Two thousand kilometers. Wow. Okay. So let's bring back up orbit. Let's get in closer. So our PET is currently one thirty-three. So let's go down to a hundred and see what things are looking like. Okay. So that's good. And okay, so we're at 743 M, so we still have a long way to go. Let's get down to like, yeah, I was gonna say like 50 M and check things out. Okay, let's go back to real time for a moment. Okay, so our PEA is holding pretty steady. To zoom in a bit. And we have Vesta up on the HUD, so rotation. Let's rotate prograde, see if we can see it in the forward view. Yep, we can see it. So let me turn off the HUD. There's our target right there. See it showing up on the video playback. Alright. And we need 
let me bring up let me bring up interplanetary on this side let's go to the menu we're unshared and let's go to the orbital program mm, let me think let's try course and if I come up here and go to plus and then I go previous set if I go menu configuration I created a base what I did so there's this base called Aurora I've talked about it in a couple of my other videos I don't know what order they get uploaded in though so there's this base called Aurora that was made by I think the guy's name is Pappy uh, Dimitri introduced me to it when he made a clone of that base and put it onto Deimos and did some work to modify it so that it would look good so I took that idea and I did the same thing on Vesta, although I didn't blend it in as good as Dimitri did. But the default base <clears throat> looks pretty good as it is because it's uh, Vesta is like a grayish, moonish color. So I, really, I don't think you really have to even do any blending. But I couldn't find a perfect place on Vesta, but I found a pretty good place. But if you look really close, you, you'll notice that it's not perfect. So anyway... Um, Aurora, uh, their, Daybreak is a synonym of Aurora, and so is Daylight, so I called it Daylight. And now I'm going to go Menu, Course, we want Orbit Insert, Target Vesta, um, do I have to change my reference, do I have to reference myself? Target Vesta, it's not working. I don't know what to do. Do I have to reference Vesta? Maybe that was it. Okay, I think that was what I probably needed. Alright, so let's warp time four, get a bit closer. When would we do this? 49. Does that seem accurate to anybody? Translation. Rotation. So it uh, interplanetary is saying I should be rotated in that orientation. Does that make sense? Let me bring the HUD back up. I mean, maybe it'll make sense by the time we're supposed to do that burn, but 49, that's not 1,000. That's like, does that make any sense? I don't think that makes sense. Time to begin the burn? I don't think that's right. So I'm not, I don't trust it. I'm going to go to the to the orbit program and I'm going to do velocity match Vesta and we need a, a 470 second burn time so we just have to do the burn manually when we're about 250 seconds so our distance is currently 22 Okay, so that seems accurate. All right, well, we're almost at 20 minutes, so let's go ahead and switch camera views to the overlay. And we, we, we're here, so we're at Vesta. So when we come back in the next part, we will do our breaking burn. I'm going to do a save point right here, just in case I somehow screw up the breaking burn or the velocity match, because it is such, it's like trying to land on a golf ball. So... Uh, if we if I mess it up, I can come back to this point and have another go. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this part of the series, and I'll see you in the next video.